All right, everyone, I'm going to do the Jim Cornette clip. Uh, reviews MJF's promo on AEW Dynamite from 10 30 22. And I already know from the thumbnail I'm going to be getting ticked. But let's torture ourselves. Let me tell you the first thing about small businesses. First, there's More satanic an idea and all that crap. Speaking of friends playing, Renee Moxley Good was in the back with Soraya, where they exchanged Gotta girl talk, the and then Britt together, Baker came in and they exchanged girl arguing. Plus minute video. And then we went to a commercial, we came back, and Renee Moxley Good was on the ramp now. And she introduced what an amazing introduction. Here it is, word for word. Joining me right now, MJF. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, she shouldn't give MJF a big build-up for an introduction because MJF is about to try to take the world title away from her husband. And I agree with you, which is probably a real good reason why she shouldn't be doing a fucking interview. Jesus H. Christ. Unless they're going to do something with and it. I'll be glad to hear that. Nice if it was a legitimate situation, Gosh, dang it. then the guy's wife would not want to interview the guy that's going to try to fuck him around. Let's see, and like, they got 18 interviews. Marvez was still around, old you Officer could, you Barbara. You like she was forced to He do hoked it. up the last segment. But they, I'm sure they didn't play that up. But anyway, so here comes MJF. The MJF chance, the devil has arrived in Virginia. And I've noticed, Renee asks questions like a WWE interviewer. It's very stilted and stagey, and it's a prepared question. It doesn't rattle off the tongue. It doesn't come off the top of the head. That's been the but biggest thing about her in here so far. It's been apparent that she's doing a WWE style, and it's terrible. Well, and, and but it seems like somebody could say, okay, you trained. don't have to do that now anymore. Right? Like they used to make it. You Even the thing in the that. back, it's much better when you go to the interview and someone's standing there with the people. Not now, she has to introduce everyone, and they stand, they walk in from a step over, and then you have to see them, and no one says anything for a weird, awkward second. Don't do that. She's not Gene Okerlund. She's another interviewer. <laughs> anyway, so and, and, and I know that's the only place she's ever been, WWE. So she's never actually been in a wrestling business. But you would think that if you watch television, you'd know how to do a natural interview. But nevertheless, MJF was great, imitated Moxley. I want to drink your bones and eat your blood, whatever. And he was hilarious there, told Renee to shut up. Promised that he was going to wrestle oh, the title stupid. match relatively clean, and he was Ooh, winking. You know, it's been, hey, not all the way. You know me. Turn you off. You can see what they're trying to do here already. Instead of leaning into how they should worship him and telling the people that they're obviously dreck and paupers and beneath him, but he understands like why the they worship him. him back. Now he's being friendly with him, and he's bringing him in. And what am I right, contract. Virginia? Because Jericho's getting his way, and he doesn't, even though Jericho doesn't want heat, and that's a good thing because he doesn't have any, yeah. he wants to be the top heel, and he can't do that with MJF around. Right. So the first thing after, logical you know, theory. showing up, Day late and a dollar short at the after the brawl, and then saying, you know, punk, you're a cancer to the business, and then getting in Tony Khan's ear about that. Now he's figured out a way to fucking move MJF over to the side and diminish him because what's going to happen is they're still going to love MJF for a while. But after what's happened at the end of this program, we'll get to it in a minute. When you put MJF in a sympathetic position, you've just screwed the pooch. You have, what was it that uh, Kevin Sullivan said after they beat Goldberg? Well, we just, or no, it was Hena. We just killed the goose that ate the golden leg. Ate, ate, the, <laughs> ate the golden ate leg. Ate the golden leg. Ate the golden <laughs> leg. We just killed the goose that laid the golden egg. Yep. 
He promised he wasn't going to use the diamond ring, did MJF, because he wants to show Regal up. He did a fired-up promo about Moxley. But he's going to win on behalf of every scumbag who told him he wasn't good enough. Because apparently that's a big thing with the modern generation. People have told them all their lives that they weren't good enough and they weren't going to be able to do this. And apparently these fucking suckers actually believe these people and get upset about it. Instead of going, how about this? Can I turn it up for you? Fuck you. Feed you some fish heads. That's your opinion. Go on about your business. Everybody takes this to heart and is mentally scarred by these people saying these horrible things to them. So when MJF says, you swear, I'm going to get back at every scumbag who told me I wasn't good enough, the whole crowd's like, yeah, because we got a bunch of those too. I don't have one motherfucker in my 60 years in life that I want to get back at that told me I wasn't good enough because the only ones that ever said that, I'd already was good enough and had been so good for so long that I was there for them to say that to. And I didn't believe them when they said it then because I think I'm better than they are and I think they're idiots. Yep. But now what they're going to do is they're going to have MJF a sympathetic figure. When's the last time you had sympathy for Satan? When is the last time that you felt bad for Charles Manson? When is the last time that you just, God dang it, if things had just turned out better and he hadn't been bullied in school, I bet Hitler would have been a, a better fellow. <laughs> You don't do this. He wasn't this. a Rothschild. Stokely Hathaway comes no, out. Or is it, that is his name now. Oil. Malcolm Bivens, now Stokely Hathaway. Terminator I call him Stokely Terminator. Carmichael so much. He comes out and MJF slaps out. his microphone away and tells him, don't touch Moxley or you're fired. By this point, Renee Moxley Good had completely disappeared and the crowd finished MJF's catchphrase. How does John Here's the problem. not come out there and beat the crap out of him? Again, with no leadership like and no experience at good, the top. That would be a good segment. It was easy for Tony to be manipulated into believing that MJF should be a babyface because he technically already was. He's a tweener. But the He's reason why he already face. was is because he was so talented and so unique and he was a heel and they that fucking he hated him until he became the best thing on the whole fucking Who's show. Who's even in a fight as a heel? A baby face. For the variety of reasons of attrition and yeah, poor talent choices. Who are you going to turn So here? then the people are Christian cheering Case? him out of the Who's building. The I don't even know. And if he was continuing to do oh, what he was man. still doing... And take advantage of that. Say, yes, you're right. You should worship me. Right now. Drop gotta, down on your knees. You turn MJF, Give me you five. Turn everybody Hallelujah. Don't do that. Now he's being nice to him. He's bringing him into it. He's 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 working you with. You can tell them. how satanic wrestling was. Just listen to this crap. It's so obvious. And he's going to be popular and over for a while, but sooner or later, you. unless somebody smartens up and they switch him back quick. And then it will still diminish him because it happened at all. Right. Don't do it. They're taking away the part of they, the devil the that you were intrigued cold. by enough to get close enough to him to like sell him your fucking soul. So I understand Tony with no experience, no knowledge, no insight, believing somebody with experience say, oh, you got to make him Jeff a baby face because people are cheering him. The problem is, is Tony set up a situation where the boss is a complete novice and has to be relying on people like that who have their own agendas and their own reasons for giving him advice because he's not smart enough to know the difference. So anyway, it's so soon, so rushed, so wrong. Stokely has been here, what, six weeks? Remember when... Well, you don't remember, Brian, you weren't born, but you know it happened, and you've seen footage since then. But when Dusty Rhodes switched babyface in 1974 in the Florida Territory, broke loose from Gary Hart's army, like Pak Song Nam, the evil Korean assassin, and whoever else Gary was managing, wasn't it Missouri Mauler? Join the U.S. Capitol Police. 
It's more than a job. It's an opportunity to protect the heart of America and earn a great starting salary too. Stopped your comedy. That's better than joining the military. The people had been wanting it to happen for months and months. Dusty had been getting started cheered because of his promo and because of his charisma. Even when he was in the heel group. And Eddie Graham was smart enough to realize that, but he wanted the people to call it themselves, and he wanted them to really want it. So he milked it. Yikes. And he milked it. And Gary Hart's group. Gary Hart had been in Florida as a manager for years. He was a heel through and through, and his group was a main event group. Even when he was in the heel group. And Eddie Graham was smart enough to realize that, but he wanted the people to call it themselves, and he wanted them to really want it. So he milked it, and he milked it, and Gary Hart's group. Gary Hart had been in Florida as a manager for years. He was a heel through and through, and his group was a main event group. And all these people had been interacting for months and months on every week's TV. And... It got to the point where Dusty, still as a heel, was so, getting so popular with the fans, the famous spot. They gave Dusty Rhodes a match against Jack Briscoe for the NWA title. And Briscoe, of everywhere in the country, he was the biggest babyface in Florida. He'd been the hero there for years. And Jack Briscoe, when Dusty dropped the fucking elbow on him and covered him, one, two, Briscoe had to put his foot on the ropes to cause a break. He almost lost to Dusty Rhodes fair and square. If he hadn't been that close to the ropes, it would have, the people popped. And they were not happy that Dusty didn't win. And that's when Eddie Graham knew it was time to do the deal. And as a result, not only did the, the territory sell out in every major market for months and months on end, it was the best run of business in the history of Florida wrestling, but it made Dusty Rhodes one of the top box office attractions in the business for the next fucking 15 years. Or they can do it with a mid-card manager that's been in the company for six weeks with a group of job guys that we barely saw that had never been together before last month. And then they can just, oh, okay, well, now it's time to do that. Here we go. Your thoughts? You know, the problem is both options here are not good. And you have to wonder, and MJF's still a young guy, and there's a lot of people there who have been around wrestling for a long time. You have to wonder if he's hearing the wrong thing from people. Because another thing that we realize at least I do. I mean, you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but out of everyone there, he has the most potential to be the biggest star and in doing so being a bigger star than everyone who's currently in a W. Yeah. MJF's future in wrestling is bigger than what Chris Jericho's past was. And I'm not saying that's an insult to Jericho. If things work out the way they should, the trajectory continues. That's the way it is. So I would... Starting in 2024... Yeah, so... If everyone there is telling him you, should, you need to be a babyface, you need to be a babyface, maybe you also need to consider where it's coming from. Who amongst these people is a wrestling expert? But I said it's one of two things and they're both bad. It's either that this is an attempt to rush an MJF babyface turn, which I'm not happy with, or potentially even worse, it's a big swerve, and MJF will turn out playing this whole thing out to trick Moxley and Regal, and they went as far as him getting his ass kicked by his own group to swerve people. See, I'm not happy with any of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. None of the and also, what you say, I can, I, I can firmly believe that a bunch of the young guys on the roster are going, hey, MJF, you're you know so popular, you know, you're going to be a big baby face, and they think that'd be a good thing. But no. And, and Jericho stooped himself. He said it in public. At that media thing. Oh, yeah, MJF's going to have to be a baby face here. He's going to be our big baby face real soon. Yeah. And that's what he's wanting. He's, he's moved Punk to the side. Now he's going to fucking minimize MJF, and there you go. The field is clear. Because nobody with that long experience in the wrestling business cannot see. And I think MJF knows. Because he can't. What do you think MJF is thinking now? How do I put my matches together as a babyface? What the fuck? He has impeccable matches. Perfect matches. Everything makes sense. Everything gets across. How can he do that as a babyface? And, and maintain everything about him that got him over. The promos, he's, he's doing it somewhat, but when the, when the devil loses his edge and becomes the kindly old cranky guy down the street, you know, then he, he softens. It, 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 it wasn't. Right. Steve Austin didn't just come out and suddenly start fucking clanging bottles of fucking milk together. He did exactly the same thing he'd always done, and the people called it, and the opponents changed, but he didn't 
Do you ever recall a time where Steve Austin was a heel and then became the baby face, but the, the, the heels came out and kicked the shit out of him and left him laying for that to happen? But the other thing is, last week we had this amazing promo with him and Regal. And all wow. that. Did Regal say boo on this episode? MJF got a long promo. I'm necessarily crazy about all this Oakley stuff. He did color on the Jericho Appreciators match. What would have been more effective, that or him coming out there for a minute on that stage in front of that crowd and saying something to pump people up for that match? Fresh off last week's promo. Instead of not having him do anything like that. Make people remember the good shit and keep doing it.